Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, August 9th, 2019, where I am. Um, so I'm about 13, 12 hours ahead of you guys. Um, I do not have Wi-Fi, so for some reason my computer already had um, this website open, yet another political map simulator, yapms.com. Um, so I guess that all worked out for me. So I'm pretty much just doing um, a 2020 Senate election map based off of 2008, uh, I guess, House election result composition. And the reason for me doing that is I decided to do 2018, which was 10 years before, uh, sorry, 2008 would be 10 years before 2018. And it was the last time the Democratic Party um, had a majority prior to 2018. So I thought that it would be pretty interesting to do a map about that. Um, I'm stepping a little bit away from Democratic primary data and, you know, uh, 2020 presidential election predictions for just a little bit. Um, and I also, of course, apologize for not uploading the past couple of days. Again, I do not have Wi-Fi, so I'm going to have to go somewhere to upload this video. Um, but I'm just doing this map because it's based purely off data. I think that that's always an interesting, uh, I guess, viewpoint to go based off of historical data and apply it to today's map. And I do think that it could hold some interesting results. Um, if we're talking about uh, the way that 2008 worked out, I mean, it was a Democratic wave year. We had President Obama uh, winning his election with over 360 electoral votes and the House Representatives at 257 for the GOP. Um, and I think 179 um, or 181, uh, no, I actually 178 um, or 179 around that number for the GOP. And then in the House, in the Senate, we also had 60, Repu 60 Democrats at one point and 40 Republicans, which I think is pretty interesting as well. Um, that was because of Arlen Specter's switch back in 2008 or 2009, um, the Pennsylvania senator who switched from Republican to Democratic. But um, the election ended with 59 to 41, considering the independents at caucus with the Democrats uh, and the House with 257 for the Democrats. And I'm not entirely sure about uh, the Republican number, but it's somewhere around 179. Um, but yeah, so pretty much going to be applying the House composition data to the 2020 Senate map. Uh, and I do think that this should hold some pretty interesting results. So again, uh, the, we have 34 toss-up seats, 31 Republican seats, 35 Democratic seats. The dark gray seats are the ones that do not have a current uh, election up in 2020. Uh, and of course, all the light gray ones are the ones that have elections up. So some of the northeastern states don't have elections up. Some of the states on the west, Florida does not, for instance, one of the more, I guess, hotly contested swing states every election season. Um, two Rust Belt states do and two Rust Belt states don't. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin don't. Michigan and Minnesota do. Um, Ohio does not. So pretty much all the states in the dark gray do not have an election. But uh, this party map should be pretty interesting. I'm looking at the general map. Obviously, you guys don't see it, so I don't spoil the results too early in the video. Um, but they do hold some interesting uh, things. So we're going to start off on the West Coast and slowly make our way over into the East Coast. Um, so yeah, let's go through that. So we start off with the state of Oregon. Uh, and I, by the way, I'm going to be doing this by, I guess, margin. So lean, likely, tilt, and of course, safe. Uh, but the state of Oregon has, I guess it says 80 to 90% Democrats. So obviously that one's going to go into the safe column. Oregon also is expected because it is a pretty solid Democratic state in the presidential elections as well. Alaska has one sole representative. Alaska goes to the GOP. Um, every state with three electoral votes has one sole representative. Uh, and some states have two. And some states have 53, like California. Uh, Idaho is an actual tie here. So this one I'm going to leave as a toss-up, and then we'll come back to it. The reason that Idaho had a toss-up here, um, you'd expect to have two Republicans as the die until a couple months ago when I went through this data. Um, but Idaho has one Republican and one Democrat at the end of 2008, uh, just based off of, I guess, a Democratic wave. Idaho's first district narrowly went to the Democrats. Um, second district, of course, stayed with the GOP, but it ended up with one Republican and one Democrat. Uh, fun fact, this Democrat was also endorsed by the NRA in 2010. Um, Montana would be safe considering there's only one representative. Same thing with Wyoming. Both of those states have a GOP incumbent uh, in I guess the House representatives. Um, Nebraska has three GOP incumbents. Surprisingly, Nebraska's second district didn't flip from red to blue, which was pretty interesting to me, though it did in the presidential election. Uh, whatever. Uh, South Dakota, however, had one sole Democratic representative. Both of these, North Dakota and South Dakota, had two Democrats who both lost in 2010. Uh, of course, to the GOP. Um, that is pretty interesting. I'm so surprised that South Dakota and North Dakota both had two Democrats in. Um, that's pretty surprising. Uh, Kansas has, I guess, three to four, so I'm assuming three to four uh, Republicans. That's enough to put it in the safe column. I'm still going to consider that one safe. 
uh, in the favor of the GOP. Oklahoma had, I think, four Republicans, one Democrat, but still, again, a safe call for the uh, GOP there. Uh, Arizona, we avoided by accident. I don't know why I did that, um, but it had a majority Democrats. And keep in mind, John McCain was running, and he is from the state of Arizona, served as the senator there, and then followed up after the 2008 election. Um, but Arizona goes to uh, the Democratic Party by actually a likely margin, uh, which is pretty interesting. New Mexico, every single seat in New Mexico went to the Democrats. It's just like 2018, all three Democratic seats. Um, of course, same back in 2008, going to the Democratic Party. And Colorado has an, is another likely state we're going to add to the Democratic Party. So 40 Democrats, 37 Republicans, 23 toss-ups. Um, we have some outsiding states, obviously, in the south, and then we go up to the northeast, Parts of the Rust Belt should be pretty interesting. Texas uh, currently has um, it actually is rated with 41 to 40, 51 to 59 percent uh, Republican, which is pretty interesting. Um, that's enough to put it in the lean column. Still going in favor of the GOP, obviously, um, but that's pretty interesting that it was that close uh, back then. Over in Arkansas, there's actually majority Democrats, uh, are more than in terms of percentage than Arizona and Colorado, which I think is pretty interesting. Arizona goes to the democrats joined by mississippi uh, two southern st democratic states um which are now republican states states that you would never expect to go to the democrats in terms of house or even the senate uh which is i guess fun that we have a changing map different from what we normally are used to uh the state of louisiana goes to the gop uh that one i guess isn't too surprising for anyone um Iowa and Minnesota. These are two Democratic states. Iowa is actually a Democratic state now in terms of percentage three to one in the House from the state of Iowa. But Minnesota joins them as well. Of course, the state of Illinois uh, would have majority Democrats. So this puts the Democrats at 45 and we haven't even touched the Northeast. Uh, this is definitely going to shape out to be a good looking map for the Democratic Party. But we can go ahead and hit the South. There are some Republican seats as expected. Alabama is one of them would be safe for the GOP. South Carolina would actually be likely and Georgia would be lean. Uh, again, three states that got very narrow, not in terms of the presidential election, but in terms of the, um, I guess, Georgia and South Carolina more than Alabama. Um, but compared to where we see in 2018, uh, definitely a little bit narrower than what we're used to. Tennessee actually had majority Democrats in the lean column, but nonetheless, majority Democrats. I think that's also pretty interesting. And North Carolina had majority Democrats enough in the likely column. Uh, that's pretty interesting as well. Kentucky had majority Republicans. That's expected. We have that now. 2018. 18 Kentucky 6th District had Amy McGrath, who is now running for Senate from the state of Kentucky against Mitch McConnell. She's an Air Force veteran. She lost her House election, but very narrowly against a Republican incumbent. Um, we should see how 2020 Senate election turns out against Mitch McConnell. Um, if you don't know who Mitch McConnell is, he's the Senate Majority Leader, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows who that is uh, by now. Uh, Virginia, surprisingly, had uh, more Democrats than Republicans. And when I say surprisingly, it's because the state of Virginia had not gone to the Democratic Party since 64. Uh, I believe that and the state of Indiana. There may be another state that flipped. Um, but Virginia went to the Democrats in 2008 by, uh, not sorry, the state of North Carolina went to the Democrats by 14,000 votes. But the state of Virginia flipped to the Democratic Party for the first time in a while. I mean, it was a pretty solid likely Republican state back in 2004 and the year 2000, but then 2008 was the year that it changed and since then has gone to the Democratic Party in almost every single statewide election following uh, 2008. That's something that is notable. Virginia wasn't a Democratic state 12 years ago, um, and that's something I just want to point out because Virginia, I call every single election night or election prediction for the Democrats, unless there's a really bad Democrat, because that's generally how the state of Virginia is going to go. Northern Virginia has definitely turned a lot more Democratic than it has in years past. Uh, but still, Virginia was not a, a Democratic state, which is why I think that this is notable, even though this is something that we expect now. Going over to West Virginia, the percentage was actually higher than for the state of Virginia in terms of uh, party composition. I'm pretty sure they had about uh, two to three Democrats and one Republican seat in. I would say to West Virginia goes to the Democrats. So that puts them at 49, Republicans at 43. Uh, we go over to the state of Michigan. That one goes to the Democratic Party by a lean margin. The state of New Jersey goes to the Democrats, and the state, uh, state of New Jersey puts the Democrats over the top. They officially win uh, the Senate majority at 51 seats, meaning they don't need the vice president tiebreaker, let's say, if they win the 2020 election. Uh, but the state of New Jersey goes to the Democratic Party. Surprisingly, the state of uh, Delaware goes to the Republican Party with one sole representative from the Republican Party, uh, one of the few Democratic states that held Republican incumbents um, in the House of Representatives. But uh, the state of Massachusetts and Rhode Island, I'm assuming these all had complete uh, Democratic majorities here. Same thing with New Hampshire and the same thing with 
the state of Maine. Uh, so that one toss up from the state of Idaho, I'm going to put it in the tilt GOP column. That's just how I expect it to go in the presidential election and how pretty much anyone would expect it to go in any statewide election from Idaho. Um, but just interesting that the state of Idaho was a pure toss up with one Republican and one Democrat in a state that is so solid for the GOP now that you never expect that. So the map ends up with 45 Republicans and 55 Democrats, a number of Democratic states in the south, one from South Dakota, uh, states that you wouldn't really expect, West Virginia, um, and some Republican seats from states like Delaware or a toss up in Idaho. Uh, you know, the 2008 map was a crazy different map than what we're used to seeing today. So that wraps up today's video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.